Hello, homeschool families. Welcome to January's Julie Kitchen Table. Um, we are still into biographies this month, and I have a really great biography. Actually, I have two for you today. One that we'll, we will read, 21 Elephants, and one that I'll tell you about, How Emily Saved the Bridge. Now, this one actually um, is the story of how the bridge was built, and this one is about how someone proved that the bridge was strong enough to cross. So we'll start with 21 elephants, and then we'll get into our really fun project. All right, 21 Elephants and Still Standing by April Jones Prince and illustrated by Francois Rocca. For 14 years, they'd watched it rise. The city's school teachers, bankers, cabinet makers, pointing and gawking, ooing and eyeing, cheering as the great pillars grew. Then came woven steel cables, strung graceful and strong, like stairways straight to the stars. Taller and longer, Bigger and broader, a bridge of infinite dreams. New York and Brooklyn, dwarfed by its arches, knew the future had entered their sights. Amazing, worth the waiting. It was simply breathtaking. The eighth wonder of the world. Some wondered how long it would stand. When the day finally came and the Brooklyn Bridge opened, the landmark was given its due. Flags waved, bands played, kids hoorayed before bigwigs and top hats galore. At night, there were fireworks, skyrockets of light that rained for an hour from atop of the towers to the roar of the crowds down below. Packed on sailboats and steamers amidst bright colored streamers, people partied until the sun rose. For the two sister cities, there was special excitement. They were linked by a magnificent bond. Now over the river, not on its swift current, they could visit, do business, see sights. Sweethearts could take moonlight strolls. The bridge was exquisite, a true work of art, the greatest feat of its day. But so long and so lofty, its cables so new, some had to ask, is it safe? To those doubt-ridden few, friends sang the thing's, vir the thing's virtue, the arches, the truss work, the view. Still, some could not be persuaded. Similar bridges have fallen. Who wants to bargain this bridge won't dance in the wind? One man who heard this, Phineas T. Barnum, saw in the doubt an opportunity. For Phineas T. Barnum always looked on the bright side. Phineas T. Barnum was larger than life, the world famous showman's most awesome creation, the greatest show on earth. Yet Barnum's ideas weren't contained by a tent. I will stage an event that will calm every fear, erase every worry about the remarkable bridge. My display will amuse, inform, and astound. Or else my name isn't Barnum. So one evening in May 1884, the circus headed for Brooklyn. It traveled by water, except for old Barnum's most massive, most gallant attractions. Up Broadway they sauntered, trainers and charges, enchanting more than a few. Onlookers went wild and filed behind, beguiled by the pachyderm procession. 
For the public prized elephants, especially Jumbo, pride of the circus ring. With his height of 12 feet, a good-natured beast was America's oversized darling. On the group marched, past City Hall, past mothers and fathers and children. Then the bridge, straight ahead, the spectacle mounting with the giant's first steps on the roadway. One after another, the elephants pressed onward, silently trusting the wood planks and steel. Five, six, then seven were crossing, ten, eleven, and still there were more. Some onlookers oogled, some giggled with glee, some questioned companions or strangers. How many pounds can the wondrous bridge hold? How many elephants are too great a load? Swaying and rumbling, still they were coming, the parade of elephant bulk. At the end of the line came Jumbo himself, for 21 elephants in all. The seven-ton star seemed to waggle his ears in reply to admirers' cheers. And though the bridge stretched a mile in just a short while, and much to the people's delight, the elephants had crossed with the bridge still aloft. Barnum pronounced the thing sound. In the following days, some doubters strolled the greatest bridge on earth. What else did they do once they'd savored the view? Why, they went to the big top, of course. And here's Barnum's Circus. All right, that's the end of that book, but I'm going to talk a little bit about this one before we start our project. So this book is about Emily Warren Roebling, and she is the wife of the actual bridge builder. Now, the bridge was um, starting to be built by her father-in-law, who was measuring before the bridge came in to, um, to be built, and a ferry hit his foot and he ended up dying from that injury. He got infection, and so he passed away. So his son started to take over building the bridge, and in the process of building the bridge, he also got sick from a disease that was caused by the bridge itself. It's called Quezon's disease, and it's about um, the pressure when you're under the water and coming up too fast they actually weren't under the water, but they were down deep into the bridge as it was being built. And so they had the same kind of sickness happen. And so he ended up in a wheelchair and his wife, Emily, who wasn't an engineer, ended up completing um, having the bridge built with the help of her husband. She got the information from him and she went back and forth each day to the bridge and told the men what to do. And because of Emily Roebling, she, um, was instrumental in getting the Brooklyn Bridge built. So um, if you're still interested, come and take this book home with you. This is also at our library, How Emily Saved the Bridge. It's a really great story. All right, we're gonna do our own experiment today. For those of you who've come in to get your packet of goodies, it should look like this. We'll take out everything to begin with. So everybody has some graph paper. Here's a picture of the Brooklyn Bridge. There's a paper ruler. And our instructions on how we're going to do this experiment. Rules for bridge building. We also have 100 marshmallows. And before you build, and I didn't do this, um, either take your marshmallows out and let them sit, maybe for a few hours or overnight, so that they get a little bit hard. It's 
kind of hard to build when they're squishy like this, but we're going to do it anyway today and I'll show you what happens. We have a paper box. We have 21 elephants, not really, 21 pennies. And we have 50 toothpicks. So I bet you know what we're going to do with the toothpicks and the marshmallows. This is our bridge building equipment. So marshmallows and toothpicks. And then we're going to test our bridge with our pennies and our little paper box. So before we start, while we're letting our marshmallows dry, I want you to take your graph paper and we're going to count one square as a marshmallow and then two squares as a toothpick, okay? So this is your plan on how your bridge is going to be built. And I'm going to use a marker so that you can actually see what it looks like. Um, I would do it on the top so that you have extra space on the bottom. If you don't like how the bridge looks on the top, you can do a second one on the bottom of your bridge just to figure out how you're going to put it together. So I'm going to say that my marshmallows are the scribbly part, like so. And then I'm going to draw my toothpick. Let's make it three, okay? There's my toothpick. And then I'm going to put another marshmallow and another toothpick and another marshmallow. So let's see if we have it right. One marshmallow, one, two, three, toothpick, just one toothpick. There's another marshmallow. One, two, three, another toothpick. Okay. And we need to build it so that it's at least six inches across. And maybe we're going to build it a little farther because we're going to have to attach our bridge to each side of the, um, the big pillars, which are going to either be boxes, Kleenex boxes, or books. Okay. So after you have your plan, I'm going to say that this is what my bridge will look like. How's that? Better? Okay. So I want my bridge to be wide. So I'm going to add another side to this. Because one bridge is not going to hold up my paper box, is it? I can't put a paper box on one toothpick. So we need to have a little bit stronger bridge here. Okay, is it looking like a bridge? It's coming. Now you don't have to build it like I'm building mine. You may build it however you like. All right. And I'm going to keep going to get to the other side of the paper because I think that's about how long my bridge has to be. And I'm putting these cross beams in here too because I think I need to hold it together. So look at there. We have a perfect fit. Okay, can you see? All the way across. Okay? All right. Um, like I said though, you can build it however you want. If you want to use more marshmallows, if you want to use more toothpicks, you have 100 marshmallows and you have 50 toothpicks. All right. So what happens if our bridge falls once we have it together? We start over, right? Or we add to our bridge to see if we can make it stronger. So let's look at what we have here. I have two boxes. These are like shoe boxes. You can use these or you can use books. And I think I'm going to use books because we're at the library. So I'm going to take out these are all books that have been taken out of circulation because they're old or they're, there's something wrong with them. All right. So these are our pillars that are going to hold our suspension bridge. And we want to make sure that they're almost the, the same height. How's it look to you guys? I think it looks pretty good. I think I'm going to put it this way though. So. Make sure that you have two pillars for your bridge. Then we're going to take our little ruler here and we're going to lay that down so that we can see that our bridge is hopefully 
at least six inches apart. Okay. Try and get this in the middle here. Move all of our marshmallows. All right, so that looks pretty good. I have it set at the one. Now you might want to tape it down, tape your tape your ruler down just so it doesn't move while you're building. There we go. So one, two, three, four, five, six. I actually have seven inches here. We can move it in a little bit. All right. So now we're going to start building. Let's quick read through our bridge building um, rules, though, okay? So everybody take out your paper. We'll put it here. So you're designing and building a suspension bridge just like the Brooklyn Bridge, and it, it will be weight-bearing. Now that means that it's going to hold up 21 elephants or 21 pennies. So we imagined and we drew a bridge with toothpicks and marshmallows. We have platforms to hold the bridge up that are six inches apart. Like I said, it could be Kleenex boxes or shoe boxes or books. Um, if you use books from home, though, ask mom if you can have some uh, saran wrap or something to put over the books so we don't have sticky marshmallows on your nice books, okay? All right, so there are no other supports. You can't have anything to hold it up in the middle. We only have this and this to support our bridge. We're going to test our bridge with the pennies and on our little lid or our little paper box. Let's see how many elephants our bridge will hold. And then we'll see how we can change it to make our bridge stronger. All right, so here we go. Dump out your toothpicks. All right, so if you want to, you can do it just like this. Watch it come together. Look at there. You know, I can already see that I don't think my bridge is going to be very sturdy, but we're going to try it anyway. And we'll see if 21 elephants break Julie's bridge. Do you remember how much they said Jumbo weighed? I have some information on that too, and we'll talk about that as well. We'll have to multiply 21 elephants times a ton, which I believe is 7,000 pounds, so it's a little less than what Jumbo weighed. And I think that adds up to something like 294 thousand pounds of elephant cross the bridge. All right. Well, it kind of looks like a footbridge right now. And did you know that the Brooklyn Bridge was a bridge for cars? At that time, not many people had cars. Um, it was also there for a train. And it was also there for people to walk across. So there are actually six lanes on the Brooklyn Bridge. I'm going to make this just a little longer because I don't know for sure how far this is. All right. Well, I think we did pretty well. All right, I'm going to take those off. Oh, no. If you still have your tape, and you can see, look at, I've got marshmallows already over my, okay, already over my, um, all over my books. So, saran wrap will help. So it's okay to tape them on there, tape them pretty good. 
I'm going to take those off too. Whoops. And we'll tape the other side on there. It's not a very long bridge, is it? We could make it a little longer if you spread the books apart a little bit farther. And we can do that. But let's try this experiment first. All right. So there's our bridge. Here's our little lid. All right. Let's count them. One, two, three, four, four elephants, and my bridge broke. Oh boy, I thought I was going to get farther than that. Okay, we're going to keep these up here so we remember how many it took. I still have all my pennies left, or my elephants. All right, how can we redesign this bridge? Let's see here. I think I'm going to use double the toothpicks and double the marshmallows. So let's see if we can put two toothpicks instead of one on each one. And maybe we can use extra marshmallows as well. If this doesn't work, I have one more idea. And we'll see if you've already thought of it. How to make something strong that's the shape of a square. Okay, almost done. And the other thing about this, like I said, if your marshmallows are hard, leave them out overnight so that the marshmallows are hard. It'll be a little stronger than what it is for me today. All right. Okay, so I put two toothpicks on each one of... And I'm going to move it back together a little bit. Make sure you keep it six inches apart because that's part of our experiment. Okay, let's see how that works. Maybe we better have a couple more down here too. And a little bit more tape. I think it looks stronger already. What do you think? A little more tape. Another thing you can do is if you have masking tape at home, that's a little stronger than scotch tape. Okay. One, two, three, four, five, six inches apart. Okay, here we go. Let's try it again. Should we start with the four we had to begin with? There's four. Five, six, seven, eight. Ooh, we doubled our strength. Not bad. All right, so eight elephants made it across. Let's see if we can make it even stronger. Now, how do you think we can make it stronger yet? I think if we make cross braces. Do you know what a cross brace is? If we go corner, oops, that might not work though. I think our marshmallows aren't long enough. So that one may not work. Let's see if we can do it. Maybe, how about this? Let's put a marshmallow in the middle and see if that will work. Can you see how that cross brace is working now? I don't know, but we'll see. Keep thinking of good ideas on how you can make your bridge stronger. Another thing to ask you, how do you know, or how do you think P.T. Barnum knew those elephants were going to get across that bridge without falling? 
he really did have a secret. So think about that too, and I'll tell you the secret. He knew that they were going to get across because elephants have a special talent. And one of those talents that the elephants have is that they use their trunk to test things, going, going across things, bridges or other things, so they know with their trunk before they even set foot on that bridge if it's going to hold up or not. So he knew, but nobody else knew. All right, I have one more here to do, and we'll see if it works. The other thing is your hands get really sticky, so you might want a little wet washcloth somewhere close at hand um, just to make sure that... Okay, here we go. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, look at there, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, and all our pennies are on the other side. Oh, it's going to go. I should have moved my pennies to begin with. All right, we'll say fourteen on that try. How about that? So you see, we strengthened our bridge by having cross braces. All right, so we found out that a single marshmallow and a single toothpick was not going to work. Two toothpicks worked better. It doubled our strength because we went from four elephants to eight elephants. And when we did our little cross hatching, had I picked up our pennies first, we might have gotten a few more in there. So we got 14 on the last try. I want you to build until you can be able to hold up those 14 elephants on your bridge, on your Brooklyn Bridge, all right, and be successful. If you do, take a picture for me, will you, and we'll put it on our Facebook page to show everybody what your bridge looks like. All right, so this is our suspension bridge. We did a pretty good job today. All right, thanks for coming. Don't forget about Emily Roebling, and don't forget about the 21 elephants. There's Emily and P.T. Barnum.